so let us continue the topic of value of supply in the last lecture we have covered section 15 subsection 1 subsection 2 and subsection 3 of the topic value of supply practically it was conceptually it was only subsection 1 of section 15 section 15 subsection 1 simply says that transaction value is the value of supply and now what is this transaction value it is the price which actually is being paid or payable by the recipient this is the transaction value but when this price actually paid or payable is treated as genuine and can be applied when two conditions are satisfied that the buyer and seller these must not be related and between them price is the sole criteria or sole consideration when these two conditions are there only then price actually paid or payable is the value of supply 15 subsection 2 and 15 subsection 3 only makes some additions or some exclusions in determining this transaction value that's it but in reality every time i cannot meet these two conditions that buyer and supplier are not related and price is the sole criteria consideration every time it's not possible it's possible that i am supplying some products if i am a businessman i am supplying some products to my brother it's, it's it's possible it's possible that buyer and seller might be unrelated but price is not the only criteria so many times exchange offers comes that you exchange your old two wheeler with the new two wheeler by paying some extra amount so every time the conditions of section 15 sub section 1 cannot be satisfied and in that case what option i have i have section 15 sub section 4 with me so now let me start discussing with you section 15 sub section So section 15 sub section 1 was applicable when these two conditions are satisfied that buyer and seller these are not related and price is the sole consideration but if either this condition is not satisfied or this condition is not satisfied or both the conditions are not satisfied then how can you apply 151 but in that case search for 154 and what it says if it is not possible if it is not possible to apply 151 then you apply 154 so 154 comes later than 151 you cannot directly search for 154 you have to make sure that 151 is not applicable only then you can search for 154 otherwise no if 151 is applicable you have to apply 151 not 154 and now in 15 sub section 4 it says that there are different rules then value of supply will be determined 
under 15.4 as per different rules. So these are there are five rules rule 27 28 29 30 31 so let me start first rule 27 with you this is our first discussion today rule 27 what it says how you determine the value of supply when consideration is not the only criteria or when consideration is no holy in money How to determine the value of supply when consideration is not holy in money? That means this condition is not satisfied here that price is the only criteria because you don't know the full consideration of money terms, monetary terms. You have something non monetary also. Now, in this case, how do you determine the value of supply? Now, let me tell you the problem what you can face is example. You purchased a new car. Four rupees five lakh. By exchange. Of your old car. In this case, can you tell me the value of supply? Can you tell me the value of supply? Can you tell me the value of supply in this case? On what value GST will be given to the government in this case? I have given to any, I have given at any car shop showroom and I have given 5 lakh to them and I have given my old car also. What I am asking you is that, can you tell me in this case the value of supply on which GST is payable? Any answer from your side? Value of supply. Any answer in this case? How much will be the value of supply? Is it easy to tell the value of supply? Can I say that value of supply will be 5 lakh? Those who are in favor, please raise your hand. If I say that value of supply is 5 lakh, those who are in favor, please raise your hand. It is wrong answer if you think that value of supply is 5 lakh. Because technically the car's value of supply is not 5 lakh. You are getting it for 5 lakh because you are giving some assets of yours also. Had you not given your old car, the same car would have been for might be 6 lakh, 7 lakh, who knows. So why I have given you this example is to show you the relevance of rule 27. When consideration is not holy in money, problems can arise. Now let me tell you the concept also. I hope the screen is still visible. So that was the example only. So I'm removing it. And now let me tell you four different situations where the consideration is not only in money. How will you determine the value of supply? So the value of supply depends upon the following.
cases. Situations. Value of supply. Now, first situation is one. If open market value of such supply is available, so this is a new concept. If open market value of such supply is available, what is the value of supply? Open market value. So this is a new concept that what is this open market value? Now you need to know it. What is this open market value? What is open market value? It is the amount paid in respect of any supply. Amount paid or payable in respect of any supply. By the recipient, where supplier and recipient are not related, and price is the only criteria, is the sole criteria, sole consideration you can say. So technically it is open market value. Now, for example, if you go and buy interest in buying a laptop from any shopkeeper, you have to pay to that shopkeeper money. And you don't know that shopkeeper. So whatever is the price which you are willing to pay, it becomes open market value. Anyone can purchase this laptop by giving the monetary condition, by giving the amount in money terms, and this becomes open market value. It's available to everyone. It is open market value. So what I am saying you, I am saying to you in this case is that if open market value of supply is available, then open market value is the best answer to show that this is the value of supply. And if not available, it's also possible that open market value of such supply is not available. Then what? Then the act says that whatever you have the consideration in money terms, whatever you know, whatever is the consideration in money terms plus add the consideration of non monetary terms. consideration in or you can say non monetary considerations converted into monetary terms or not converted non monetary consideration equivalent to consideration as is equivalent to monetary consideration. This world is more suitable. So the earlier were also correct, but this one is more suitable. That is the answer. If you don't know the open market value, at least you tell us how much you are giving in monetary terms and what non-monetary thing you are giving 
so that that non monetary thing can be converted into monetary and it gives you the answer of value of supply i will show you this with the help of examples so before discussing other situation let me share with you some examples example one and you have to see that why how i will apply the concepts now example number 1 mr x supplied a laptop to mr y for rupees 30000 along with an old laptop along with an old laptop exchange <coughs> the laptop supplied is of rupees 37000 if without any exchange this is the concept that i am a supplier i have supplied a laptop to mr y for rupees 30000 but i took his old laptop also and if someone is not willing to share the old laptop in exchange formula then the same product is available at 37000 now can you tell me in this case how will i determine the value of supply i have to apply can i apply section 15 one answer is no because price is not the sole criteria in this supply in this supply price is not the sole criteria sole consideration price is not the sole consideration so 15 1 cannot be applied can i apply 15 4 yes within 15 4 i have to apply rule 27 where consideration is not the sole criteria and if yes then out of four situation what is my first situation is the open market value of such supply available answer is yes what is open market value where buyer and seller are not related and price is the sole criteria so if it is without exchange the same laptop is available at 37 it is nothing but open market value so if open market value is rupees 27000 and it is available this becomes my value of supply as per rule 27 please raise your hand if the concept is clear next example example 2 mr x supplied a laptop to mr k for rupees 30000 along with an old laptop exchange the price of this old laptop is rupees 4000 that's it can you tell me the value of supply in this case in this case also what is happening can i apply 15 one answer is no i cannot apply 15 one because consideration is not the sole uh, price is not the sole uh, sole consideration so i have no option but i have to search for 15 four within 15 four i found that there is a rule 27 which says that if consideration is not holy money you can apply 27 
Now, in this, my first case was, is open market value available? Answer is no. What is supplied is laptop. Is open market value of this supplied product available? No. It's not available. Then I had second case. If open market value not available, at least you know how much in monetary terms. Yes, I know how much is monetary terms. So how much is monetary terms? 30,000 is the laptop monetary term plus. Convert non-monetary consideration into monetary and there is no special formula needed. Just convert it logically. I exchange it for a laptop and this old laptop price is 4,000. So technically, I can say that this is the equivalent monetary value. 34,000 is the value of supply. Please raise your hand. Next point. So I have covered two cases where open market value is available and if not available. Now what is the third case? Suppose you don't have open market value and still you cannot compute the value as per this formula. So I will say that if value of supply cannot be determined, as per case 1 and 2 above. If you cannot determine the value as per case 1 and case 2 above, then what option you have? Then government says no issue, search for the similar type of product. It is just like the concept of fair rent in the topic income tax act. If you remember the topic of house property, while determining the expected rent, we were taking fair rent into consideration and the concept of fair rent was rent of a similar property in a similar locality. So if you cannot determine the value as per case one and case two, then what option you have? Whatever is the value of goods or services, whatever is your case of like kind and quality. In the same example, if I say that a laptop is supplied laptop of HP is supplied for example HP laptop is supplied to Mr. Y but not mentioned at what value nothing is mentioned but the same compositions Dell laptop Dell's laptop of same composition is available at rupees 60,000 So neither case one nor case two is applicable. Open market value of this supplied HP laptop is not available. And if not available, then I still do not know how much is the consideration is money and how much is the exchanged item. Nothing is available. Then government says no issue. Search for this similar category of laptops, competi competitive products value in the market. That becomes your HP laptops value supply. So there is a new concept now like kind and quality what do you mean by this like kind and quality
any other supply so i'm using the word other other than my laptop any other supply made under similar circumstances that means similar means what that in terms of quality reputation features quantity etc any other supply made under similar circumstances or uh, is uh, similar to the supply made the main concept is in case of like kind and quality it simply says that if you don't know the exact value of your product supplied search for the similar quality features etc product in the market and whatever is the value of that product you can take that value as a substitute for your own value because you don't know anything so in my example what will happen the value of supply of this hp laptop becomes value of supply of this hp laptop becomes sixty thousand. this is my example number three and suppose if this like kind quality product is also not available so if value of supply cannot be determined as per case 1 2 3 above then what option you have then government says or act says no issue you simply check how much is the consideration in money at this to know something if it is available plus equivalent value of non monetary no monetary things which we will tell you how you should determine as determine in rule 30 and 31 in order so order one is mean now in the second example non monetary consideration was given where it was easy to convert it into monetary because the exchanged products value is available in the market so it was easy to convert non monetary into monetary but now in fourth case the rule says we will tell you how you should convert your non monetary value into monetary we will tell the government says there are two rules to do this rule 30 and rule 31 and it says in order in order means how will you convert the monet non monetary value into monetary first you apply rule 30 if rule 30 becomes applicable don't search rule 31 if rule 30 is inapplicable only follow the next rule rule 31 that means you cannot skip rule 30 to directly go to determine the value under rule 31 you have to follow the proper sequence first rule 30 and then rule 31 this is what the concept is example number 4 
So last example. Mr. P supplied a customized customized uh, machine you can say customized machine to Mr. Q that's it and the question says how will you determine the value of supply now can I apply 15 one answer is no because consideration is missing that means I have to apply 15.4. Answer is yes. 15.4 is to be applied within 15.4. Why 15.4 will be applied? Because I cannot use section 15.1. Within 15.4, I will apply rule 27 because consideration is not wholly in money. Within rule 27, my first concern was is open market value available? No. Not given in the question. If open market value such as not available, is consideration money available? No. Is non monetary consideration available? Answer is no. If value cannot be determined as per clause 1 and 2, then like kind and quality product available? No. Why it is not available? Because it is a customized machine. Customized means it was specially made for Mr. Q's request. So it was a customized machine for which there is a very low probability of like kind and quality. There is very low probability because it was specially made for my own use. So I had my own set of conditions to be incorporated in this customized machine. So there are chances that like kind and quality is not available. So you have only one option now. A value cannot be determined as per case one, two and three above. Then whatever is monetary, if you have take it, otherwise you can write it as zero plus non monetary as per section 31. This is what my rule 27. Is your hand if rule 27 is clear? Any problem without any hesitation, please ask. Otherwise, raise your hand. Now, next rule, rule 28. Now, what rule 28 says? Determination of value supply when supply is between related persons. Between whom? Between two people. Either the people are related persons. I hope you remember who are related person. It was mentioned in explanation to section 15. I have already explanation to section 15. I have already told you this in the topic of registration also. If you remember who are related persons. Or between distinct persons under section 25. I have also told you this in the initial phases of GST who are distinct persons under section 25. Now, when supply happens between these two, you cannot say that actual price payable is a genuine one because these are related people. So you cannot apply 15.1. You have to take the help of 15.4 through rule 28. So how do, do you determine the value of supply in this case?
the value of supply in such cases will be determined as follows. Now there are three cases. Earlier there were four cases in rule 27. Now there are three. Case one. Same thing. If open market value is available, if open market value is available, then open market value is the best price. So take that as the value. Second, if open market value is not available. Now, since this supply is between related person, so price actually paid is always irrelevant. That is why my answer will be changed here. In earlier case, in Rule 27, wherever I use this word consideration in money, consideration is money, those things will become irrelevant now because now the relationship or of supply and recipient is between related person. So actual consideration is a little bit biased i should not trust i cannot trust this actual consideration when open market value is available what is the price in open market value when buyer and seller are unrelated so this is genuine but when open market value is not available i cannot use this formula which i was using in rule 27 i cannot use this formula consideration is money plus non-monetary equivalent i cannot use it i will directly come to the like kind and quality i have to come directly at this point. so this is the change and you must know what is the why this is changed because actual consideration is money will become irrelevant so when open market is not available then value of supply of like kind and quality product becomes the answer so conceptually you must know why like kind and quality this becomes the value of supply. And third case. When value of supply cannot be determined. as per case 1 and 2 above, then when it is not at all possible in such cases to determine the value of supply, then again, what change you have to make? You cannot trust this value, consideration is money, consideration money, because now it is between related persons, so directly the answer will be this. So I will simply write that the value of supply as determined by rule 30, or 31 in order in order means i will first apply rule 30 and then i will go to rule 31 in the order this is the this is when the supply is made between related persons now see a small example Mr. X in Delhi is a registered person. Mr. Y is in Punjab. And suppose these are related persons. For example, these are related persons. For example, these are related persons. A laptop is supplied. To Mr. Y in Punjab. These are related person. Laptop is supplied. And Y has given. They have given laptop. Y has given 7000. So actual price pays, paid is available. But it is not the authentic price. So I cannot apply section 15 subsection 1 here. I 
I cannot apply 15 month because this actual price is of no use if buyer and seller are related. So 15 month cannot be applied. 15 four yes, because condition of buyer and seller unrelated is not fulfilled. So I have to apply 15 four. Through this, I will go to rule 28 because buyer and seller are related person. I have to follow rule 20. And what it says, case one. Is open market value of this laptop available? Answer is not available. Case two, if not available, then what is the answer? Value of like kind and quality. If not available, then value of like kind and quality. If value of like kind and quality available, that becomes the answer. If value of like kind and quality is also not available, then I have case three. If that is also not the case, then case three. If value cannot be determined, then you have to determine the value. So I will determine the value of supply in this case by applying rule 30. If rule 30 does not give me the answer, then I will go to rule 31. You know, that's it. This is one point. Till this point, if you have any issue, please raise your hand. Sorry, if the concept is clear, please raise your hand. If the concept is clear, please raise your hand. Okay, now one concept. In this case, one option is available. One option is available in this case. Option is available. In one case, in one condition, in one condition, another option is available. For this, I need to take the help of last example. When Mr. X was supplying a laptop to Mr. Y in Punjab, and both are related person. Suppose Punjab person will also supply it further. In Himachal, this person will also supply it. So this Punjab person will supply the same laptop as it is, as it is. As it is without any problem. So as it is, the same laptop will be supplied by the recipient. Now in my case, I'm computing the value of supply from supplier's point of view. So this is the supplier, the lease person. And Punjab person is the recipient. My intention is to cover this category or this table. I'm not concerned about what this Punjab recipient is doing. So whatever answer I will determine, that answer is in whose hands? My value of supply answer is in whose hands? is in the hands of Mr. Rex. I'm not concerned about what this Punjabi recipient will do, but my value of supply is in the hands of Mr. Rex. Mr. Rex. So the value of supply is dependent upon whether open market value available, not available, or rule 30 or 31. This is the answer without any problem, but one in one situation, the answer can change. What is that situation? In one situation, answer can change. So what is that situation? The situation is if your recipient, who is my recipient, this Punjab person, Mr. Bai, if your recipient will supply the same product as it is further, as it is without any change, then it is your option. Your means Mr. X has an option that what he can take he can take the value as 90% of the price charged by the recipient. Who is the recipient? Mr. Y. Otherwise, this Himachal person is also the recipient, but I'm not concerned about this chain. I'm not concerned about this 
this chain. I'm concerned about my original first chain. So 90% of the price charged by the recipient. To his customer. I will assume it with the help of an example. 90% of the price charged by the recipient. To his customer. Of like kind and quality. Provided. But there is a condition. The recipient and his customers, the recipient and his customers are unrelated. So what is happening in my case? Now, let me revise that example. Mr. X was the supplier supplying to Mr. Y in Punjab. X was in Delhi, for example. Now these two are what? Related persons. Mr. Y is supplying it further to Mr. K, who is in Himachal. So what was supplied by was laptop. And suppose open market value of laptop and this laptop was for example HP laptop open market value of HP laptop for example was rupees 80,000 so in my case what is the value of supply since open market value is available the value of supply becomes 80,000 answer is this 80,000 till this point I hope there is no issue but I have another option available or now this is optional optional on whose parts Mr. X parts. Mr. X. It's the choice of Mr. X. It's optional that but he can take. He can take the value of supply as 90% of the price. Now this Punjab person wants to sell this HP laptop further. This Punjab person who is the recipient wants to sell this HP laptop further as such without any change. He is selling Dell laptop, laptops also. Now this Punjab person, there are so many customers. Mr. K is the customer. He wants to sell this HP laptop to Mr. K. There is another customer also, Mr. N, who is in Himachal, for example, in Himachal. And Mr. N says, give me Dell laptop. This laptop is available for rupees 87,000. And this HP laptop, which Mr. Punjab person will supply to Mr. K, will be of course a little bit more. So he will charge 1 lakh. This Punjab person has purchased this laptop for 80,000, but why will he supply for 80? He will add his profit and will supply the product as 1 lakh rupees. Dell laptop is being supplied by this Punjab recipient to Mr. Himachal at 87,000. Now, what? Now, technically, why this Delhi person is concerned with this dealing? The Delhi person has no relationship with this dealing, but still government says your value of supply is between related persons. So whatever is the open market value that if answer you have taken because you are covered in that situation where open market value is available. So you took the answer 80,000, but we are giving you another option. That whatever is the price charged by your recipient from his customers of like product that means Dell products price is rupees 80, 87,000. 
into 90 percent that will be 78 300 90 percent of this will be 78 300 if this if your recipient and this Himachali person mr m if these two are unrelated then it's your choice you can take 80000 or you can take 78300 it's your choice so mr x has a right mr x can choose the value supply as 80 or can choose the value supply as 78300 that's it. this is what the concept is so if he wants to pay the tax on 80 there is no problem if he wants to pay the tax on 78300 it's no problem but since these two people were related people, since these two were related persons, so government basically thinks that whether you sell the product or Mr. Y sell the product, it does not matter for us. We are giving you simply a choice. It's your choice. You want to follow, you follow, otherwise you can skip it. That when your related recipient supplies the product further. So that value is of no use to us. Because the same product was given by Mr. X. So actual price charged by Mr. X from Mr. Y is of no use. So the same product is of no use. But if your recipient is supplying a similar product to unrelated customer of his, whatever is the price is into 90% can be your price. Because what government thinks that 78, 300 is the most genuine price between related person technically there is no genuinity there may be biasness so what is the most authentic way to compute the genuine prices that if the final recipient is unrelated now see who is mr and final recipient if this final recipient is unrelated and to that person if your recipient is supplying same quality product for it is seven thousand the rational assumption is that in this 87,000, 10% might be the profit margin of Punjab person. And this person's cost would be 90%. And what is the cost of this person is nothing but your sale value supply. So this is how they are determining the best option available. I hope the chain is clear that why this 70% of 78,300 because Mr. N is unrelated person. If he is being charged 87, then the supplier of Mr. N, supplier of Mr. N is Mr. Y. Supplier of Mr. N is Mr. Y. At least 10% he must be earning. So his cost would have been 78,300 and whatever is his cost, it is will be assumed that Mr. X sale value is his cost. So these are the options available. Mr. X can take the supply as 80,000. No issue. But if he wants, he can also take the value as 78,300. In this way, government wants to. Government thinks that. That 78,300 is the genuine price. That's it. This is a way simply to make sure that because between related person, the actual price is never blindly be trusted as the honest price. So they have given this option, which in in the eyes of the uh, in the eyes of the government, this another option shows the genuinity of the transaction. That's it. It shows the price is the best possible price in a, in an unbiased manner. But it's your choice as a supplier. You want to adopt this uh, this method. You adopt it. Otherwise. Simply take the value of 80,000 as the supplier's uh, supplier's value. That's it. So today I have covered two rules, rule 27 and rule 28, which are applicable when either the buyer and seller are not related or price is not the sole consideration. 
that's all from my side for today so goodbye